You guys ready for some scary Halloween stories? <laughs> Tales from the campground. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, we reached out to our email subscribers and asked for some help with this video. We thought that this would be a perfect time to do a little Halloween scary themed <laughs> storytelling even, video. Yeah, even the most of the stories are kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of our email newsletter, that's who we reach out to for things like this. So if you want to get on that list and subscribe, it's completely free. It's really just a, a place for us to share our content outside of YouTube, mm -hmm. blog posts, things like that. So we'll have a link below and you can subscribe to that and get on our list. Another great thing about our website is if you're looking for a piece of content that we've made, you can search our entire library of content from our website. Yes, there's a lot of good stuff in there. If you guys like this format of us getting stories from viewers like you, let us know if you have any ideas for future videos. Maybe we'll use your idea. And thank you to everybody who submitted your story in response to our email. <laughs> Obviously we can't use all of them. We picked out some of our favorites uh, and we condensed them a little bit. We didn't change any of the wording though. These are gonna be stories from you guys. And we're also going to cut to some special stories from some people you probably know. Mm -hmm. And Chad's gonna start with the first story. Our first is from Mike in Ohio. Year or last while dumping at Caesar Creek State Park in Ohio, I pulled up to dump after waiting an hour or so due to traffic and my wife continually waiting until the last minute to pack up. I think that's a little bit of a dig there, Mike. It's about, <laughs> it's about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I have my hoses out, connected to the septic tank, to then under the trailer to attach to the dump valve. I think he's at a dump station, septic tank. Much to my chagrin, the cap will not budge. I try it a couple of times and my blood pressure is on the rise. I go under the trailer again and give it a mighty effort and the same result. I'm looking everywhere for the problem while campers behind me are giving me the evil eye as to why I'm not getting so much done. <laughs> this was my big fear with the whole poop hose thing. <laughs> I'm gritting my teeth at this point and still at a total loss as to the cause of the issue. Under I go again with a mighty twist and off it comes. Just as it's coming off, I see a wall of black wastewater coming at me while out of the corner of my left eye, I see the handle of the black water tank sticking out as far as possible. I had forgotten to close it after our last dump. <laughs> so you figure a 35 gallon tank that is full equates to 280 pounds of black water coming no. at me from 12 to 18 inches away. <laughs> By the grace of good Lord alone, I was able to get the plunger of the black tank pushed in while getting what I figured to be about 10 gallons on me. Mm. Yeah, you know, rough estimate. <laughs> <laughs> I yelled to my wife to quick get the freshwater hose and hose me off. She responded admirably and got me cleaned off while the campers in both lines were watching. <laughs> I was able to finish dumping then clean the area. I had my wife pull the trailer ahead so another camper could pull up to dump. Oddly enough, we were told by more than one of the folks waiting to dump they had gone through the same experience and reassured us that anyone and everyone who camps does this at least once. <laughs> the positive take on this is that we added closing both the black and gray water valves to our checklist. Very important to have yes. a checklist. So I think next, I think we're going to share a little video from some of our friends, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to watch it and you're going to see our reaction at the same time. So this is an experience from our friends Tom and Cherie from enjoythejourney.life and this is one of their RVing horror stories. All right, you ready? I'm ready. I'm Buzz Lightyear. Oh, Buzz, groovy. I'm Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> There's no intelligent life here. Buzz, you need to chill. Mellow, man. <laughs> We're gonna take Halloween to infinity and beyond. <laughs> Far out. Oh my gosh. I'm off to save the universe. Do we have any RV nightmare stories? <laughs> I would say we have a few stories to share. It's hard to pick just one. One of the worst ones that I caused is I crushed the truck with our new to us RV. Hold on. Oh, that's so bad. What the hell? My biggest nightmare? was when we stayed at a place when there was tons of 
flies. When I say tons, you're not gonna believe it. It was flies. <laughs> Okay, that's gonna be a spray. Okay, he's got one on the TV right here. Not just flies, millions of flies. Oh my gosh, was he gonna jump me? Free. Spray it with Windex. Nightmare. They're spraying it with Windex. And there's more. We stayed at an HOA RV park. So they've entered our property. They have oh, yeah, moved oh, our yeah. property twice. They got a little bit heated. I gotta call the police. And our final RV nightmare story is actually the most recent. We stayed on the spooky mesa of Skinwalker Ranch. Oh yeah. I don't know show. if you catch yeah. the show or not, but here's a little preview. Bigger than humans, two big ones, one smaller one. They need to stay out on their <laughs> side of the fence. Yeah. Have you ever? We have. We've got some cool stories. Well, thanks Chad and Tara. <laughs> For what? Making us relive these nightmares? Yeah, what were we thinking? <laughs> so take your Halloween to infinity <laughs> and beyond. And enjoy your journey. Peace. <laughs> And I knew it was gonna be funny, so I wanted to wait and get my reaction live on camera. So that was great. They did an awesome job. We'll have links for all these people in the description below. Yep. It's my turn to read, right? Your turn. Okay. I can't read anything without glasses these days. So, okay. This story is from Joey and Janet in Lenoir City. Am I saying that right? Lenoir City, Tennessee. Looks like, it looks like Lenore. Lenore. Lenore? Lenoir. Lenoir. I'm saying I'm pronouncing it the French way. Yeah. Okay. As we pull into our site, we get extremely distracted because there is a, quote, pen of sorts as you exit the RV. The site is huge and has a fenced-in pen for your dogs. We are just dumbfounded by it as we let our three dogs out of the truck and into the pen. Wow, was what we kept, kept saying even struck up a conversation with our neighbors about the size of the sites. At this point, we are ready to get settled in and start vacation. I climb the truck and release the hitch clamp and jump down to begin the leveling process. I see my wife grabbing the tire chocks for her side and it reminds me that I still needed to do the same for my side. I put my left hand on the top of my truck rail and reach in to grab my chocks. As I apply very little pressure, and in a millisecond, the camper rolls back and slams onto the top of my truck. Ooh, just like pinning, you saw in Tom and Cherie's video. Right, pinning my hand between the camper and the truck. Oh my gosh. Believe it or not, not a single curse word left my mouth, <laughs> but there was enough screaming and yelling to attract the entire campground to our site within seconds. My wife, luckily not pinned herself, sprung into action and knew enough about our rig to begin the painful drop of our hydraulic legs to extricate me from this mess. One leg comes down and then the second leg comes down, all followed by shifting and grinding on my hand. Mm. We just knew my hand was crushed. Following the ambulance ride to the hospital and x-rays, my hand only received deep bruises, no fractures or breaks. Now they were kind enough to share pictures with us. <laughs> so that's what you are seeing. Wow, that's a story to that's a, that's remind a us story. all. Yeah. to to pay attention especially yeah. when you're hitching up or setting up so thank you guys for sharing that they actually have several horror stories yeah, that they, they shared, shared with they us. shared three with us we're going to share two do you want to read the next <laughs> yeah, one yeah i'll get the next one okay you know and this brings up a good point too when people are pulling in and setting up don't distract them yeah so again, Joey and Janet. <laughs> Back to Spring Lake RV Resort where a week of work and play. We love this place and it's just off the beaten path that gives us peace and quiet, but also close enough to civilization to stay connected. We purchased a toy hauler primarily because we love to take our three fur babies, a Doberman, a Yoki, and a Golden Doodle with us. A Yoki? A Yorkie. Did I say Yoki? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Doodle is a cuddler and loves to cuddle with his daddy, Joey. But as it might be, he can also accumulate things in his fur from time to time. At Spring Lake, the grounds are surrounded by woods. In Tennessee, woods also means poison ivy. Well, Joey is highly allergic to poison ivy, but Joey still loves to cuddle with the doodle. <laughs> Fast forward, Joey wakes up to a ring of bumps around his neck and a huge rash all over his back. Oh, and let's just say that Joey scratched around his neck before going to the bathroom. <laughs> this is a horror story. <laughs> yeah. Yep, let your imagination go on this one. 
even even got it there. Sorry, no pics of this one. <laughs> a doctor's visit to get steroids in the bath for the dogs, and within four days, all was fine. Oh my gosh! Four days of that. Oh my gosh. Let's go see what Jason and Ray, our friends, the getaway couple, have to say about their RVing horror story. So this one time we were in a campground for a little bit longer than normal. And we happened to have some neighbors, which were, I guess I'll call them a little bit environmentally friendly. And so one of the ways that they were very environmentally friendly was that they were composting. And while I really appreciate composting, unfortunately, in this close tight campground, their way of composting was taking their plates and opening the window of their kitchen and scraping the food scraps right off the plates <laughs> out onto the ground right next to our picnic table and what? into our site. No. And so uh, after a couple of weeks of that, we got a little bit horrified. <laughs> Yes, oh and to top it off, I guess one of the perks is that their pets, they had a small dog and a duck that they would let out every morning and evening. And even though their dog was leashed, their was the duck, leashed? duck was not. So the duck used to come over into our site every morning and evening and actually eat some of the food that they threw out the window. Oh so. It's funny to look back at it now. At the time, this was definitely a frustrating experience, but that's one of the best parts about RV life is that when you're going through a horror story in the moment, you can always leave, and I guarantee you that you're going to look back and have a good laugh or two about it. If your neighbor has a duck, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I can't say that. Some of the most frustrating times in our four years of RVing have come from neighbors, neighbors. absolutely um, people not taking care of their barking dogs and the noise of that or people chopping wood at 2 a.m yeah so we've got another story to read okay if we can get the ipad going here you're up right mm -hmm. mm. this one is from brian he is from roslyn ontario canada my aunt and uncle decided to travel across canada in their motorhome after they retired neither one of them owned a cell phone on one of their stops, my uncle being an early riser, got up and asked his wife if she wanted to shower before they hit the road for the day. My aunt said, no, I'm too tired, go on without me. After my uncle had left, my aunt began thinking to herself, maybe I should go and have a shower. There may not be another campground as clean as this one and I should take advantage of it. My aunt packed up her shower supplies and walked over in her house coat to shower up. When she finished showering, she walked back to their campsite only to notice their RV was gone. <laughs> Immediately, she thought to herself, maybe he just went to get some gas. She walked over to the office in her house coat and began waiting for her husband to return. Remember, they said they didn't have cell phones. Yeah. Approximately two hours later, her husband hollered back in the RV, Millie, you sure are missing a beautiful day up here. <laughs> Millie? <laughs> Millie! <laughs> Needless to say, after a four hour wait in her house coat, my aunt was not too happy. <laughs> I think after that trip, my uncle added, check to see if wife is on board to his departure checklist. All right, so we are going to share another story with you from some of our friends, Scott and Christina. We haven't seen it yet <laughs> because we're filming this before we get it. Yeah, we haven't received theirs yet, so I'm sure it's awesome. We have been full-time RVing for a little over three years, and we have definitely had our fair share of horror stories in the RV. Yeah, I mean, everything from having to live without a refrigerator for a month to cross railroad crossings that ripped our generator cover off, big dips in the road that tore up our tow bar, and getting stuck at a campground and having to have a really big rig trucker tow us out of the uh, campground. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. But the worst, I think, is the latest. In April, we were in Spearfish, South Dakota. It was a great day for a while. We had our awnings out and a microburst came along and demolished our full length awnings. Yes, like out of nowhere. I, mean, ah. I had just walked back to the rig from the clubhouse area. 
I walked up in the rig. Scott was on the phone. I wasn't in the rig for more than a minute. The skies, when I walked in, they looked okay. Yeah. They were calling for some storms and maybe a couple of hours, but it was fine at that point in time. Yes. I seen rain going across the window and I'm like, oh like my that. God, like that. Like that. I turned around and I looked out the window behind Scott and the awnings were flapping like wings. Oh. oh my gosh. From the time it started to the time our awnings were destroyed, what, what like three to five seconds. I mean, yeah. it was an instantaneous crazy microburst. Yeah. So we had to actually cut them off the rig so that the next storm wouldn't do more damage to the rig. Right. The RV community really came through. Well, they I'm did. telling you, our neighbors came from all over the place. Yes. Of course, maybe some of it was from curiosity, yeah, but, but we yeah, had a came. lot of we had a lot of helping hands. So we did. Scott was able to get the awnings off before the next storm hit. Okay, this next one is from Terry and Michelle from Kentucky. This is a good one. <laughs> My husband, Terry, and I have a 33-foot reflection fifth wheel. That's also a grand design. We are not full-timers, but camp for vacations and weekends and have been doing this for two and a half years. We took a trip this past May to Beaver's Bend State Park in Oklahoma, and our son, who lives in Mesa, Arizona, met us there to stay for the week. We had just made it to the campground after a long eight plus hour drive that day. We were super tired and this was the longest tow we'd made. And we had encountered lots of construction along the way and had even lost a luggage carrier in Memphis. See, I don't know how that happens. <laughs> we pulled into our spot. Terry was setting up outside and I was setting up inside. I felt gross from the long trip and decided to take a quick shower. Terry was flushing out the black tank from our two day trip from Kentucky. And I noticed as I got out of the shower, there were a few bubbles coming from the toilet. I had never seen that happen before. I got dressed and yelled outside telling Terry what I saw and I said, maybe you need to drain the black tank. He said, oh, I'm sure it's just some air bubbles. I went back inside and, and as curious as I was, I hit the flush pedal. <laughs> Suddenly, a massive poop geyser started shooting up out of the toilet. There was so much pressure, it was about four feet tall and a foot wide and it was spraying all over me, the floor and my new bathroom rugs. Oh. It's all fuzzy what happened in the next minute. <laughs> <laughs> but Terry said he could hear me yelling. I was trying to get to the camper door to tell him to do something. That's in cow caps. And I slipped on the water that was on the floor and slammed into the hallway wall, thinking I probably broke a toe. Oh, no. I flung open the exterior door and yelled as loud as I could. And I'm sure the whole campground heard it. You need to listen to me. <laughs> I understand her problem there. I do. I understand it. Terry had already figured out when he heard the yelling inside that he had left the water running to the black tank and it was full. So he ran to the other side of the camper, pulled the gate and shut the water off. He felt terrible and he started trying to calm me down saying it was mostly clean water. <laughs> <laughs> not. Oh my I told gosh. him it was brown. Then I was ticked about my new my new bath rugs. Our son was arriving the next morning and Terry, trying to neutralize the situation, said, I'm sure we can just hang them out to dry. I said, what? what? They have poop water on them. They have poop water on them, Terry? <laughs> Terry, what are you thinking? Needless to say, after cleaning up, he took me out for my favorite meal that evening, pizza. He got off cheap there. And we ended up at the laundromat early the next morning. Lessons learned, don't walk away mid-task. Finish what you, what you started before going on to something else. Some random Canadian goose flying around yeah, by himself at, at night the, in, the in the dark. dark. What a rebel. So that's why Chad sets timers yeah, for absolutely. stuff like that. As soon as I close that valve on the black tank to let it fill up to flush, I through my watch, my phone, and I say, set a timer for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. But I do feel her pain with the whole, like, you know, her husband just blew off what she was saying. That never happens. It never happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we are going to jump to some friends of ours that we just recently met. Mm -hmm. At the Balloon Fiesta. At the Balloon Fiesta. So if you guys aren't familiar with what these two do, we encourage you to check them out. We're going to have a link to their channel below. Mm -hmm. And also how you can get involved. Yeah. Phil is also ex-Navy, mm -hmm. 36 years yes. retirement. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. And so far they've completed projects in Florida, Texas, Alabama, South Dakota, Indiana, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska, Wisconsin, and Arizona. And the next stop is Mississippi. What's a year to volunteer? It is an organization that creates RV friendly volunteer projects all over the country. Let's watch their video. Oh yeah, I haven't seen it. Neither have I. Oh, we've got a good one for you. <laughs> We're in our full-time journey 
13 days, if that's not Halloween for you. <laughs> So we were traveling from Arizona to Florida and stopped in Texas. I get up and want to take a shower. Pretty normal occurrence, right? Well, I got stuck. The door wouldn't open. So I started jiggling and shaking it a little bit to try and dislodge the door and get out. No, stop. <laughs> it's a tempered glass door. If you're in your shower and you've got a shower and it's glass, it's tempered glass, that stuff will explode if it gets tweaked, just like a car window, right? <laughs> but you won't so get impaled, so that's a good thing. Right, so I said, stop, don't do anything. There's a towel rack embedded in the glass of the shower door. So I grab that thing and try to lift, because the door's kind of dropped down in. I try to lift that thing up and then open up the door and Boom! Next thing you know, we're looking at each other. <laughs> so there's no glass in between us. We're looking each other in the eyes with shocked faces because we have no idea what just happened. Glass everywhere. I look down and I look at my hand and I went, oh, oh I'm no. leaking. I'm leaking. I ran to the sink. I washed off the glass or whatever. I'm leaking bad. I wrap my hand in paper towel and then I come back and I said, I'm all right. I'm all right, and I'm holding my hand in the air, and then I take a look at her. Yeah, so I'm still in the shower, cold, wet, naked, and bleeding, because she's, I got cut on my legs and my foot. Uh, so it took us a while to get rid of that glass to get her out there, because <laughs> tempered glass, although it breaks in a thousand pieces, it's still super sharp. It'll cut you. It won't kill you. Yeah. And so we got her out, got to urgent care, all taken care of, six, six stitches, stitches later, later. <laughs> and, and now we're good to go, except... We still don't have a shower door almost two years later. What? Right now we're using a shower, shower curtain. curtain. <laughs> that is a horror story when you're laughing. I'm laughing at the ending. Oh, yeah, that sounds really? very, uh, what was that movie with the shower scene and the knife? The Psycho. <laughs> well, you know, a, bl psycho. a bloody woman in a shower. Yeah, but that's not... No. <laughs> thank right. you, Phil and Char. Yes, thank you for submitting story. that. I got a nightmare story for you. It's called filming. It's called waiting until it gets dark outside to film a Halloween video, and then everything goes wrong, and then your <laughs> microphone dies in the middle of filming, and you don't know why. <laughs> We're going to both talk into this one. <laughs> All right, this one is from Bonnie. We have a 2020 376 TH, which is a toy hauler model, but it's the one with the toy box, right? So it's not a full garage. It's just yeah. the one with the bedroom on top. Mm -hmm. We sold our 275 acre dairy farm three years ago in our full time. On our second trip, we pulled into a KOA campground in West Virginia. When we got parked and went around back, we could not believe what we saw. I wanted to throw up. The back end was almost completely torn Could you off. Imagine I on can't. Your second trip. I can't even. That uh. makes me sick. We never heard it or felt it. We were on our way to Kentucky, so we went to Walmart and got some long ratchet straps. Went through the pass-through compartments on both sides and went on to Kentucky with absolutely no tail lights. That's a nightmare right there. That's scary. Yeah. Contacted Grand Design to see about warranty information, and we were told to turn it into insurance. Yeah. Nine thousand dollars later, in almost three months, it was fixed. So I guess the story for that one would be if you've got a toy box, right? Yeah, if you've got that style of RV, we've seen that online quite a bit. We've also seen a lot of people preempt that problem by putting rollers or skids on mm -hmm. the frame. That way that is what contacts the ground and not the back panel of your RV. Yeah. They're right, stuff that happens back there, you're not gonna feel it or hear it way up in the front of the truck. Next, we're gonna go to Angie and Al from Life Beyond the Burbs. You can find them on Facebook. And again, we'll have links to all these people in the description below. Hi, we're Angie and Al from Life Beyond the Burbs. And we are here today to tell you our RV horse story of when our RV ate our clothes. <laughs> we were overheating and we were near Albany, Georgia. And so we stopped at Cummings there and they started to figure out what's wrong with their rig. Yeah, and we have a diesel pusher, so you have to access the engine through our closet floor. So it turns out they had to take out the radiator and do some other stuff and they needed to get in there. So we took out all of our hanging clothes, all of our shoes off the floor, just tossed them on the bed. They got everything fixed, said it's all back together, ready to go. Take it for a test drive. So we took it for a test drive. Everything was great. No overheating. The turbo was working properly. Everything was good until... <laughs> well, we were almost back to Cummins, and um, I started to smell smoke. 
mm -hmm. and burning, and I thought the rig was on fire. Mm -hmm. So frantically, I ran to the back. I couldn't see what was going on because when the slides are in, the bed's in the way. Al pulled in really quickly. Yeah, we pull in. You can see Cummins right there. So we pull in, and as soon as I pull in, I start hearing this god-awful flapping sound. Don't know what's going on. We stop, we run around the back, and we see shreds of cloth just yeah. flying out like of the back of the rig. Like confetti coming mm -hmm. out of the back of our rig. If it wasn't so scary, it might would have been pretty, but yeah. it was pretty scary. So we shut it down real quick. What had happened, we took all of the hanging clothes out, but we left some of the clothes on the shelves in the back. Mm -hmm. So my jeans and my backpack and a shirt and some socks fell into the fam belt and van and got ground to pieces. And yeah. it ended up breaking a, one of the, a, like an RPM sensor or something. So we had to stay another day. Uh, they overnighted the part and they fixed it. But one of the funniest things was the general manager came out and he said, Mr. Conway, how much do we owe you for your clothes? <laughs> I was like, not a penny. Just get me out of here. Yeah, we didn't so, care about that at that point. No. We were more worried that we had additional damage done to our rig mm. after that happening. So luckily it was just a part we had to wait to come in. Yeah. So and, and we learned our lesson. We now we know better than to take somebody's advice. Ah, don't put that floor back in. It's fine. Just take it for a test drive. Yeah. No. We know better. We're putting it back together next time. Yeah. The last video we're going to share with you is, of course, Phil and Stacy, our friends from You, Me, and the RV. You ready? Hi, we're Phil and Stacy from You, Me, and the RV. Yeah, and one of the scariest things that we've done since we've been on the road is we actually moved the rig while we were still plugged into the pedestal. Oops. Yeah, you want to talk about scary. I thought, and this was in the early stages of our full timing. I thought we had jacked up our whole electrical system. Mm -hmm. I thought we broke the pedestal. Uh, I had all 25 feet of my electrical cord laying out in the rain. My heart was up here in my throat because it was my mistake. Stacy was waiting on me to tell her to move forward so we could hook up our tow dolly at the time, which is another nightmare. <laughs> um, that was a nightmare. We're glad that's gone. Yeah, but we got rid of that. But uh, so far, our scariest has to be leaving the, the, the power cord plugged into the pedestal while moving the RV. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The pedestal was fine and we didn't tear up our surge protector. So we really lucked out on that one. And we were in the rain. It just, that it was, was like a nightmare. It, it was, was dark and hazy and it was pouring rain and Phil was outside soaked to the bone. I mean, it was a nightmare <laughs> story. Just like somebody wrote it out for yeah, us. If, if you want to script a nightmare where you're plugged in and, and could cause a lot of damage, that would have been it. That's probably easier to do in a class A, I think, because you can just you can just put the slides in and drive away. Yeah. I feel fortunate that we haven't had too many really bad problems. Yeah, but like we I'm, have had a couple of bad travel days. Yeah, and you know, luckily we don't have any real bad poo stories. No. Knock on something here no. or wood somewhere. Yeah, but we did have the one time that we had the tire blowout on a really busy Massachusetts highway. Oh, yeah. That was very scary, but again, it turned out okay. You were able to pull right over, thankfully, and you got it changed. And of course, we have a video on that, so <laughs> yeah. be sure to check that out. We had another really bad experience when we had our three problems in two days mm -hmm. video. It seemed like everything just broke on that trip. RV life is not always easy. So this is Tara climbing across. Oh, yeah. Look, we're actually looking through the slide right now. Yeah. We're getting hit by several things in, in one 24-hour period. We may have the slides in for the next couple of days. Um, still have the hydraulic problem. We think it's a valve. The travel day from hell continues. Mm. And I heard a drip, 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 drip. So there's a leak somewhere in there. And then we have one more really nightmarish scenario that we haven't shared with you yet, but we're going to in the next couple of weeks. So we're yeah. not going to talk about we're it. We're going to save it for yeah. that video we're because just teasing you. It's, it's bad. <laughs> so guys, if you like this format of us sharing our viewers' stories with you, I think it's cool because we can really learn a lot from each other's mistakes. The bad things that happen that we can turn into good things for everybody else, hopefully. So 